Welcome to the Nerd Stalgic Podcast with your host, the Ginger Howdy beans, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Nerd Stalgic Podcast with your host, me, Luke the Human. Hope you're doing well, hope you're all good, as per usual. Uh, today, we're going to have another side quest. It's going to be another side quest episode where we break down small little snippets, little things, you know, things that are not as long as a main quest, and that's going to take you forever, so that's going to be small, digested, and fun. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the Doctor Who novel, The Stone Rose. This is going to hopefully lead into uh, a, a grander series that I'm hoping to do. It, it, it's going to take a while to get there, but when we do get there, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. I'm hoping to do this for all of the books and all of the series but i'll get into more detail on that in a minute um before i get into it just want to say make sure to follow me on twitter at nerdsag underscore pod to updated on everything and anything that I'll be doing, uh, talking about reading, watching and all that jazz. Follow me on there. Also, you can find me on YouTube. And if you're currently watching this on YouTube, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really helps me out immensely. I'm currently at 86 subscribers as of recording this. So I'm slowly getting there. I'm slowly almost at my goal of 90 subs before Christmas. So we're getting there, especially how it's the start of summer. So we're doing pretty, pretty well. Um, so today... Uh, this episode, as I mentioned, I'm going to be looking at not just the Stone Rose, um, but I'm going to be looking at more Doctor Who stuff. Now, if let me take you back all the way to last year, all the way to season one, for my 10th episode that I ever did, um, I decided to break down the Ninth Doctor, Christopher Eccleston's Doctor, and I broke it down as much as I could. So I, I not just spoke about the Doctor, but I also spoke about um, his past, his trauma, uh, how hindsight, how now we know what he went through with the um, Time War and how the War Doctor factors in. I also spoke about Rose. I spoke about some of my favourite episodes of the first season, the first revival season, as well as I looked into some of the books and I explained how each book sort of ties in sort of narratively to the series and how that I, my original idea, which hope, which is my idea for this uh, series as well, was that how I read the books was that I'd watch an episode, read a book, watch an episode, read the book, and that I made sure that I finished all of the books before I got to obviously the final episode where Chris Eccleston regenerates into David Tennant. Um, and how I did that episode was I just did it in all one big episode. But what I decided for this one, for this new series, is that I want to cover Ten and Rose. So I'm going to cover David Tennant's run, uh, his first season, as well as his sort of first and last season with Rose, and how I wanted to cover it, and how my idea of it is kind of the same as I did with the last sort of uh, episode that I did all the way back in season one, is that I'm watching an episode of the show, I am going to then read uh, the book and then again watch another episode and read a book one thing i found with this one is the fact of when the chris veckelson season came out the books came out after so that you could watch about two or three i think it was two or three episodes um before the first book came out so in continuity way and obviously if you know me you know that i'm a stickler for continuity and law um it was a lot easier to to be quite manageable to to read them in in some form of a continuity. With this one, it's a bit more different. The Stone Rose came out a, a week or two before the first episode actually uh, aired for the the season with uh, New Earth with David Tennant and uh, Rose, Billy Piper. So it's a bit difficult in terms of continuity because I'm having to go on to Wikipedia. I'm having to go on to um, the uh, TARDIS fandom page just to kind of find where it fits in. Luckily, the Stone Rose is before Tooth and Claw, which is episode two. Um, but I think Feast of the Drowned, which is the next book, I think that takes place after Tooth and Claw. So I think I, I can watch Tooth and Claw next and continually be still in balance, fingers crossed, um, hopefully. But but that's that's my hope. So how I'm, how this is going to be structured is that I'm going to... I'm not going to review the series yet, the idea is I'm going to review the books one by one as while watching the series. I'll then sort of review the book one by one in a side quest here. 
and that then when I finish the series, when I finish all the books, I'm going to do one big episode at the end of it all, breaking down uh, the ten the ten and roses series, breaking down each episode, and then I'm obviously going to reference the books as well. So I'm going to jot down certain things, certain things that I mentioned in the books, and I, I feel like it'd be a fun thing because I said it loads of times. I want to start doing more book reviews. That's where I got my bread and butter. That's where I really began was doing book reviews. So I want to do a few more and where better than to start with Doctor Who properly, you know, as a proper series. I've done The Hunger Games. You know, I did Mortal Engines not long ago. I have did a few of, I think it was that Zombie Survival Guide. Um, I think I've done another, a few others, actually. Looking back on season one, I actually did quite a few. Um, but I want to do more. And, you know, where better than to start with Doctor Who? I'm a big Doctor Who fan. I'm a big stickler for it. You know, a big, especially for lore and, and all that. So it's going to be fun to really look into it. So that's my idea of what I want to do with this series and how I really want to break it down and I want to look into it because I thought it was quite fun. You know, I feel like I managed to understand the Ninth Doctor a lot more as I looked more into it. And again, hindsight being what it is, being able to look at how the Time War affected him, both actually from the literature that I, we could read as well as actually seeing it in, in the anniversary episode with the War Doctor, um, John Hurt. I've been able to look more into that and kind of see how that shaped into who the man is that we see in the first season and then how Chris Verkleston played him and so on. Um, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be one to definitely, I'm looking forward to to really getting started with. So without further ado, uh, that's the introduction. Now let's get into the review, shall we? So the book is called Doctor Who, The Stone Rose by Jacqueline Rayner. Uh, this book was released only two days before David Tennant's first uh, series on Doctor Who, which started its run on the 15th of April 2006. So this book came out on the 13th of April 2006. Um, it's a it's a pretty interesting book, to be honest. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, if we go to the blurb, um, Mickey is startled to find a statue of Rose in the museum, a statue that is 2,000 years old. The Doctor realises that this means the TARDIS will shortly take them to ancient Rome. But when it does, he and the Rose soon have more on their minds than sculpture. While the Doctor searches for a missing boy, Rose befriends a girl who claims to know the future. A girl whose predictions are surprisingly acute, accurate. But then the Doctor stumbles on the hideous truth behind the statue of Rose. And Rose herself learns that you have to be very careful what you wish for. It, this book right is incredibly fascinating and what i love about it it's a historical romp now anybody who is a doctor who fan uh will love the sound of that because the if we're going back to the 60s now to the original sort of run of doctor who that is what mostly what doctor who was it was historical romps yes he went to the future and he went to very science fiction but majority of the time he was in the past and that is because Doctor Who originally, the original idea behind Doctor Who was it was meant to be a tool for learning. It was meant to be the BBC's way of getting kids into science and into history. And it was a way of teaching them without having to be really for sort of like, you know, two twos or two, that sort of thing. It was very sort of fun, interesting. Like he wasn't even a Time Lord. He was just a, a man um, from the future who built a time machine. And that was the original idea behind sort of Doctor Who. And eventually, as time has gone on, it's come very science fiction, Time Lord and Gallifrey and Monsters and Aliens and all that jazz. It still kept the very sort of idea behind sort of science fiction and historic, but originally it was meant to be a tool for learning. And I love when the Doctor goes on historical romps. So uh, one thing that I love about Big Finish is that a lot of the Big Finish's stories they tend to go on historical romps where it isn't always the Daleks, or isn't always a, Sly a Silurian or a Slovene or something like that. It's most of the time it's humans. It's humans just being greedy or it's humans um, just being the, the evil part of it. You know, they're the monster is humans, kind of like Scooby-Doo. The real monster behind the mask is always humanity, you know, and that's sort of those sort of stories I really, really enjoy. Um, so this one's quite... Uh, fantastic for that because there is no real monster there isn't sort of there is like a twist at the end which i'll get into but there isn't anything that will make you go oh it was the daleks or it was um i don't know let's think of something else that isn't a slow or a slovene you know it isn't something like uh, the cyberman or something like that it is just humans being humans in a time in rome 
where there is a lot of black backstabbing and there is a lot of um, uh, things going on that's not inherently sort of positive. And again, this is a time frame where Rome was falling and Rome wasn't the sort of pinnacle of society as it once was. It's all very fascinating to somebody like me who loves history, who loves that kind of thing. And then you add in Doctor Who to it. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so the main characters in the story, you have uh, obviously the 10th Doctor, David Tennant, uh, Rose Tyler, Mickey, Jackie. Um, then you... <laughs> right. As I've mentioned many, many times, I am dyslexic. Um, and I'm all right. In, you know, read, I'm pretty good at reading. Um, reading out loud, not so much. But reading to myself, I'm fine. But when you give sort of big, complicated words, that's when I get stuck. And... These characters, obviously, when they go back in time to ancient Rome, they all have very Roman names. Um, so I will butcher the names. So if I do, you know, if you end up reading this book and you find that my sort of way of pronouncing the names is different, I do apologize. I'm dyslexic. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to try my best. So you have uh, Gracilis, and then you have Maria Gracilis, Alurus, Alurus Valerius, Urius, uh, Vanessa Moret, Moretti, and oh god i hate i hated this name so much when it came up so otius graceless i feel like i'm butchering the name and if i am i do apologize but these are your main characters uh there are one character that i haven't mentioned because of uh spoilers which i i, I should have mentioned at the beginning i won't really get into spoilers so um don't have to worry about that there but there is one character that i missed out um to refrain from from spoilers but um I'm to sort of my thoughts and feelings of the book. Like, as I mentioned, it's an historical romp. And one thing that I enjoyed much most about it was the fact of the the twist. Before you get to the twist, it is very much a very slow mystery. Like the doc like the doctor and Rose and Mickey, they go to a museum, they see a statue of Rose that shouldn't really exist. And now the Doctor and Rose being who they are, being very excited, be like, Oh, this means we're gonna to go to Rome, we're gonna find out and you know, there's very much sort of the lively sort of like, Oh, another fun adventure in Rome, we're gonna find out how Rose got um Rose got a statue and why it looks like her and obviously they're coming up with different ideas of oh maybe we meet some sort of famous sort of sculptor and he's going to sculpt me or I'm, I'm you know very beautiful it, it starts off very slow and very sort of again start on an adventure it's very fun it's not until you get to rome that's when the story starts to slow down and we start to realize that this mystery is a bit more deeper and that we meet um oh god i'm gonna butcher his name again um we meet Gracius, um, and we find out that his son's gone missing and then we find that other people have gone missing and that people are looking for their missing children their husbands their wives they can't find them and so obviously rose and the doctor being who they are they set off on this mystery and it is a very much in the vein of classic who because if you ever watch any of the classic who episodes like for example when the i think it's the first doctor meets um oh what's his name now uh, marco polo you ever watch that episode or you ever read about it uh that episode is a very long one there are long episodes episodes where it's just the doctor in a carriage going from one town to the next and it is kind of like that in this one where you have long episodes i'm not saying it's boring it's not boring at all this book isn't boring um but you do have long moments where the doctor is talking to rose and gracious and trying to get more of the plot while they're in a carriage you know and there's moments where you go to gracious his villa and you get to know his wife you get to know more about the greek culture and it's incredible again for somebody like me who's very much into history it's everything that I, I would want in a historical romp. Not just like, I want the adventure and I want the mystery, of course. That's why I'm here for. That's why I'm reading Doctor Who. But also, I'm getting the history side of it. I'm learning more about the culture. I'm learning more about the food and stuff they eat. Because again, that's what it would be if you was to um, be a time traveller, you know, with the Doctor. You would go around and you would explore and you would look at the things that were there you wouldn't just be like oh i'm just here just to look around like you'd want to embrace in the food and you want to embrace in the culture and the people so it, it for me it was kind of made a bit more sense but also then you have the mystery part of it all in as the doctor tries to kind of solve what why all these people go missing how these people go missing and the folk this focus of the story is really 
at the beginning is Grace's his son. He's gone missing. So we've got to find out him. And then we meet other characters. And that's when the plot starts to unfold. And that's when the, the sort of we find out how Rose became um, the sort of statue, how, how she has gets her own statue and what that means. And then the doctor sort of finds himself <laughs> again. This is not really a spoiler, but th- this is what I loved about it. You have that slow moment of building sort of you get the historical side of it. You get the mystery and it's building up and then the big sort of twist happens and that's when it starts to speed up. And now, again, I won't mention the twist because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But then once the twist comes in and you get a a doctor who is very much the fact of it, it has sort of elements of the Time Lord Victorious where you can see that there was a dark side to David Tennant's Doctor, that very much that there is something about him that if you mess with him, and this is what I love about David Tennant's Doctor, and you see it in the first episode um, when you watch um, The Christmas Invasion, and you get it even more when you watch uh, New Earth, you get very much the fact of, the like, for example, on New Earth, when the Doctor finds all, all these people that are being tested on for viruses and cures, and he's looking at the nurse and he's like, tell me, how many are they? And he's like, how many? And he's got that look, that evil look. And you think this guy's just gone being from lovable, cute, innocent, you know, very sort of wonderful, a wonderful man, a beautiful man. To being somebody who is very sort of tw- dark and could potentially be cruel and evil. And then you get to see the, <clears throat> the, the, the war doctor side of him come out. And they're very much of that. I don't stand for anything. I don't stand for nothing. Like you tell me now, or I'm going to bring you down, you know, and that was a theme that went off for a long time with the doctor. And you even saw it in the past doctors as well. A lot like Sylvester McCoy's doctor had an evil streak to him, a very mysterious, mischievous sort of side to him. And I love when the doctor gets very, not evil, but you can tell that he's on the line that if he wanted to, he could destroy you and he could destroy everything just, the, you know, with a snap of his finger. And I, I, I love a character like that. I love a character who is could be lovely and kind and beautiful and wonderful, but don't mess with him or her because they will break you like a twig. And I like that. You know, I love that dynamic. So for me, it, it, it I love that sort of idea. Um, and again, it's not really spoilers, but you do get a part where the Doctor finds himself in the Colosseum in Rome. Um, and he's, he's got, I love it because he's, he meets the, he's of his cap. He's he, like, this is where Dr. David Tennant and sort of his doctor has the comedy side of it. Cause he meets the other captors, the other sort of other slaves or people that have been imprisoned in sort of, um, the Colosseum that he's going to fight with. And the doctor is trying to talk, talk his way out of it. And he's trying to be very sort of calm and, and sort of like, you know, quizzical, but you can tell that he is very worried. He's quite scared. So his way of dealing with it, instead of learning his cap, the people that he's with, their names, he just calls it, he 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 befriends the, these group of um, slaves, and he just calls them John, Paul, George, and Ringo. <laughs> Which obviously, if you know the Beatles, that's the name of the Beatles. And it's just funny because, like, he, he, that's his way of rationing where he is and rationing out. Like, instead of Stephen going crazy, he just names them after the Beatles, which is absolutely hilarious. And then. Um, they sort of have once they kind of get you get to know who those characters are, and they have their little sort of discussion together. Um, the Doctor and these uh, these slaves and, and people that are imprisoned, as well as John, Paul, George, and Ringo, are thrown into the prison uh, in, in, into the stadium with him. And you have the Doctor that's like going up against lions, and they're in a, like they're in mazes, and they've got to try to escape, and they've got the Colosseum around them, and it's just like any book that gives me the Doctor right but then puts him in an arena against a lion and other sort of wild animals that's incredibly like was in, is incredibly brutal anyway like the whole idea like this like, all idea behind it was just sort of disgusting and it just shows the worst of humanity um but also the doctor comments on this as well is like this was one of the reasons why most of the animals in most parts of europe and most parts of africa went extinct because of these games and obviously the other uh, other captors and the other slaves and, and impr- people that are imprisoned all look at him like he's mad, like they don't know what he's talking about. But you, obviously, as a reader, you know what he means. You're like, look, you have that social commentary of like, in hindsight, I know what these games do to this planet and that they're not good and that they're barbaric, and which we all know that's true. But at the time, this was a normal thing. This was like going down to watching a football match. The only difference is instead of if the, if the losing team 
if the losing team loses, they just go home. Whereas this one, if the losing team loses, they get eaten by a lion. You know what I mean? That only real difference, obviously. You know, instead of it being a ball, it's a head. You know what I mean? Instead of a bit being grass, it's sand and blood. Uh, it's the same thing, obviously. You know, it's just rugby. Uh, men are men. Uh, <laughs> but it's a fascinating romp. You know, and I would love to get into the spoiler side of it. I'd love to get into the twist at the end because it has a very much like a. if you've read the book, I think it's five children in it. It's got a very sort of feeling to that. It's got a very sort of interesting twist, which is it's not it's not like a, it's not like a Bioshock one sort of twist where it's like, would you kindly um, like it, it won't blow your mind, but it's it's a very interesting twist. And again, it still keeps the story very grounded, if that makes sense. It still keeps it. It goes from it's still historical, but it goes a little bit science fiction, but still keeps it very sort of uh, grounded, very sort of somewhat realistic in terms of technology, in terms of humanity. There is no monster. There is no sort of overarching sort of um, scheme by any sort of alien race or anything like that. It's just humans being humans wanting more than what they already have and that's the best i can do without really going into spoilers um but it's interesting it really really is and like um it's funny the only thing i have an issue with about this book is that and again i i don't want to i don't want to blame the book it's not the book's fault and i'm not going to sort of dog on it for for this because again it's 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 not the writer's fault it's not the book's fault but obviously this book was written before the show came out now obviously um, russell t davis did have a hand as it, it, I think it mentions it here in the book, actually. Hold on. If I scroll in the book... Da, 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 where is it? Um, I think, yeah, the, the writer, she thanks Russell T. Davis for helping her. Um, oh, no, it's not in the book. Well, basically, Russell T. Davis helped the, the writer, and I'm guessing most of the writers with all the books kind of give them pointers here and there of how uh, he wanted the Doctor to be and how he wanted the Doctor to act. Um and those are only sort of cues that we want him to be sort of funny and witty, but also have a dark side to him. But until then, none of us really, really knew. And I guess even the writer, unless the writer got access to see footage of how sort of David Tennant is going to play the Doctor. But we don't really get to see how David Tennant plays the Doctor, how David Tennant took the role into his own sort of style and played it his own way. We can only, in the idea, my idea would be there's be only a bit of flavours here and there of like, oh, we've seen David do this, we've seen David do that, but we all want the Doctor to be this and we want the Doctor to be that and X, Y, and Z. And how that translates to the book is the fact of there are times where this Doctor feels like David Tennant's Doctor, but there are other times where he just feels like a generic Doctor, where he feels like, any other doctor could slide in this. This could have been like Christopher Eccleston, you know, or this could have been Sylvester McCoy, Colin Baker, Tom Baker, uh, Hartnell, you know, Chipnell. Uh, not Chipnell. Um, <laughs> oh, God, I don't know where Chipnell came from. Chipnell was, was but anyway, you know, the, the, you know, it could have been any doctor could have slid in and it doesn't really feel like um, the David at times. And again, it's I don't blame it because again, this book came out um, was written before the series aired so the only real hope i have and i'm sure it will do because you know i have faith in these in these books because i so far none of the books have really let me down apart from one but even then um that book wasn't bad it was i think it was called something uh it was not the uh, not, uh, it was one of chris vacuson's book one of uh, the ninth doctor's books um Interesting premise, interesting story. It just didn't blow me away. But even then, that book was still a free start. It was still a good book. It just wasn't fantastic. But the rest of the books were all four to five stars. Amazing. Um, and Jacqueline Rayner, uh, I'm a big fan of hers. She's written some of the, my favorite Doctor Who stories. She's done a lot of big finish that I've listened to. So she knows what she's doing. She knows Doctor Who. She knows how to do a good story. And she did do a fantastic story here. This is a four star. This is like a, a great book. Um, again, the only thing that really lets it down for me is the fact that it doesn't 100% feel like a David Tennant's Doctor. That's the only reason I didn't give it a five star. But even then, it's still a fantastic, great read. Um, and I have hope that as sort of the books go on and as the series went on, um, that more of the sort of authors got to see how sort of David Tennant plays the role and how uh, his doctor is and feels and that that translates better 
to the books and then as the books go on and eventually when we get to sort of the doctor and martha when we get to those books um he actually is 100 percent does feel like david Tennant. so it's all about time it's all about sort of having patience and i'm sure i have no doubt at all 100 percent that that will improve and get better as the books go on but we will see um but that's my thoughts and feelings on The Stone Rose by Jacqueline Rayner. It's, again, as I mentioned, if you're a Doctor Who fan, go back and, and read sort of uh, Christopher Eccleston's books. They're all fantastic. Even the one I didn't like, I think it's something strain. Even that one is still a good book. Um, and obviously, I listened to an audio book. Maybe if I sat and read it, I would have had a better experience because the audio uh, for that was terrible. It was They got a, a an American... Um, voice uh, voice actor to do the voice for it but they just it just didn't work because again doctor who's very inherently british um so anybody who's not british that reads them just doesn't work in my opinion um so yeah maybe if i go back to it i'll enjoy it. but again if you're a doctor who fan go back read the books watch the shows again and you know, I I'm, I have a lot of faith in this series that I'm going to do. Um, I look forward to reading more of the books. I've got all of David Tennant's and Rose's books, so I'm going to look forward to reading them. Um, I'm going to read other Doctor Who books as well in the future, um, so that's going to be fun. And then hopefully once we get through sort of season two as well as um, the books, then at the end I'm going to obviously wrap it up and do a huge sort of uh, ten and Rose episode and it's gonna be fun we're gonna break it down and we'll look into everything so that won't come until the future that'll, that'll be months away most likely because i've got other books to read so that'll probably be hopefully maybe winter time that we'll see that big episode but you know there's a lot to look forward to uh i'm, I'm getting through the books i'm enjoying it it's fun and hopefully this is fun for all you beans as well so um yeah so that's been my thoughts and feelings on the stone rose um Check it out, read it. Also, if you want to, you can go back and check out my 10th episode where I broke down the uh, Ninth Doctor. Also, if you like what you're hearing, you can find this podcast uh, anywhere and everywhere that you find podcasts. The only place you won't find me is on Apple Podcasts, but everywhere else you'll find me. I'm even on Audible. So if you're on Audible anyway, listening to the Doctor Who novels, why don't you search me and check me out and follow me on there? Um... Also, if you can find me on YouTube at just the Nerd Sagit Podcast, uh, go on there, like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Share it with your friends. Share it with other Doctor Who fans. Um, also, if you listen to this on Spotify, don't forget to give me a star rating for one to five stars. It helps me out immensely. Oh, also, just before I forget, make sure that you follow me on Twitter at nerdsagic underscore pod for updates on everything and anything that I'm doing. Uh, more Doctor Who stuff that I share. We're getting close to the 60th anniversary, so when that comes out, I'll be doing stuff on that. I'll be breaking those episodes down. And if you're a Doctor Who fan, there's a lot to come. All right, so be ready, be excited. Uh, all I can say now is, Alonzi, let's go. <laughs>